Mossy Brain. Are you human? Are you alive? If so, then creativity is inside you and it wants to come out and play. It's the Mossy Brain Show, where creativity and fun collide with your hosts, Ben and Jess Farish. Hello! Hey guys! Welcome to episode one of the Mossy Brain Show. I'm Jess. I'm Ben. Here we are. Here we are, guys. Welcome! Mossy Brain, this is a website, this is a, a podcast. What we're all about is creativity and growing more of it. That's our tagline. We're growing creativity in ourselves and facilitating creativity in all of you in everything that you do. This is the first episode and we are ready to rock. Yep. 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 Okay, so, so we want to jump right in. We want to jump right in. Let's do because, this. Because um, uh, the way this works... Um, while we're growing creativity, what we want to do, uh, we want to constantly be trying to get into a creative flow. And that's a space, a state of mind where creativity is, is happening. Uh, we're removing uh, barriers and inhibitions and allowing ideas to form, to grow, to... Uh, uh, materialize. I don't know about you guys, but I have periods of time where, you know, the proverbial muse comes along and beckons me. Uh, usually it has to do with writing. Uh, and I have feel this pull. And those times are great. Um, but sometimes I can wait a long time in between those, those uh, muse callings. And so uh, what our hope is and the purpose of these uh, flow jam exercises, the flow, the jam. flow jam, yeah, um, is that this will help us to kind of get our creative brains flowing, get that juice flowing so that we, <laughs> that sounded gross. Uh, <laughs> don't make it gross, guys. Um, so that, you know, we can kind of open things up for us and help us to kind of think more creatively. Um, and we don't have to wait for those periods of time when suddenly, oh, it's hitting me and I've got to, I've got to write or I've got to paint or I've got to make some music or whatever it is that, that uh, floats your boat. So this, this is an exercise that will allow us to, to break some prime, barriers, prime the pump. Yeah, absolutely. And this is something that we're going to do on every podcast. We're going to have an exercise where we can get into a creative flow. You guys can do it along with us, or you can you know, do your own variation uh, in your own time. But the point is, we're going to kickstart our creativity. We're going to kick off this podcast with this flow jam exercise, and then we'll get into um, our topic of the day. I do want to say one more thing. Yes. We are currently in the murky waters of the time between Christmas and New Year's. And I don't know about you guys, but I tend to forget what day it is. 100%. And uh, we are with the children all day. And uh, it is now after the children are in bed. And so I'm, I'm needing this to kind of get my creative juices flowing. So you will see how this works. And if it's a flop, then just kindly don't say anything and we'll we'll move on and we'll try to do better next time. Creativity is a process and there are no wrong answers. There you go. So the only question uh, that remains to be seen is will this flow jam be entertaining to listen to for you all? And we really don't we know. We don't know the answer There's to no, that. So yeah, you'll need to let no us know. There's no certainty here. Okay. All right, so here's our exercise for today, for this episode. Um, we are um, going to pretend to be a um, fictional marketing agency, and we are going to do a product pitch of a product that does not exist. And a product that we have not previously come up with or thought of. We have nothing. This is spur of the moment, guys. This is extemporaneous from the top of the head. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to choose the product category. Jessica is going to choose the market. And then we're going to have a wild card in the mix here. Uh, I'm going to use um, the autofill on Google. I'm just going to type some letters and see what word Google delivers to us. And that word will need to be incorporated into this product that we are going to invent and pitch to you guys right now. So this, this Could is, go very I'll tell you badly. what this is. This is uh, high wire work without a net. This is real on your toes thinking. 
we're up here, guys. We're up here real we're high. We're out there. So. And that's what that's what creativity is all about. It is about putting yourself out there. It's about taking risks, and it's about doing something that makes you uncomfortable. So uh, without further ado, um, I'm going to choose a product category, and I'm going to say this, this is a, a, a product um, drum, drum roll. category. Uh, I'm going to say home improvement. Okay, my uh, my... What, what do we say? You, you, you're choosing the market. The market is going to be seniors, but specifically grandmothers. Okay, grandmothers. Okay. Home improvement. Yes. And now I'm going to get a word. The word is cranberry. Ooh. Okay. So. Home improvement, cranberry. Home improvement. For grandmothers. Cranberry okay. for grandmothers. Okay. okay. And when we say grandmothers, can we just say uh, women over a certain age? Is that fair? Sure. Sure. Okay, so we're, we're going to, let, yeah. let's say maybe women over 55. 65. 65. Mm-hmm. Women over 65. Mm-hmm. Home improvement, cranberry. cranberry. So let's have a real-time dialogue about this. We're going to, we're going to invent this product now. We're going to have our little meeting, and then we're going to pitch it to you. Okay. All right, so let's think about this. Home improvement. What would we need to improve uh, in well, the home? Well, um, well, I, I'm thinking in terms of product categories. I mean, this could be something to do with painting. This could okay. be something to do with cleaning. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This could be something to do with uh, decor. Okay. I could see with painting, you could have a paint color named cranberry. That's easy. That's kind of the low-hanging fruit. That is low-hanging fruit. Okay, I'm just saying hey, No, no, no. Hey, there's now. no wrong answers. That's right, no guys. Wrong answers. Brainstorming. You just yep. throw it all out there. Let's make this good. Um, in... What was the second thing you said in the... Uh, I said uh, uh, painting, decor, cleaning. You said cleaning. cleaning. So cleaning, you could have a cranberry scented cleaning line Okay. Okay. for grandmothers. Yep. Um, what else? The. I'm getting yeah. something. Ooh, it's coming. Yeah. What? <laughs> what if this had something to do with the restroom? What if this was a cranberry scented air freshener? that somehow prevented UTIs. Wow. Oh, because cr- drinking cranberry juice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. So it's like double double purposed kind of This product? is like breakthrough tech. Now, could it this be something This is breakthrough tech. Could it be something that you put in the toilet? You know how they have those uh, Little cleaning pods? pods that you See, put in the what toilet? What if it was red like well this might be a problem that's, if it made the water that, red. That's in the alarming. Toilet. Yeah, red, red urine. But um, what if it ran clean? What if what what if the the water ran clean, but it created some kind of uh, vapor? vapor. <laughs> oh no. Okay, so we're the, having a, a mossy brain <laughs> mind meld here. <laughs> so the vapor prevents UTIs as it like rises and, mm-hmm. and coats your mm-hmm. your posterior. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. So uh, and is this the vapor, vapor released it, like at it a certain... penetrates like this is this is I know we're we're marketing to women, but I don't see why this would be detrimental to men at all. I'm getting excited here, guys. Sure, sure. I'm getting excited here because this has some real potential. Okay? Men are not immune. I mean Men of I'm, a certain I'm age. wondering. I mean, this is like a little scientific r- wrench. No, yeah. I'm just wondering: is this home improvement? This feels more like um, personal care. Yeah. I mean, we said it's a cleaning product, but like. I I I think I have to agree. Yeah. That we are we are exceeding our parameters. Yeah, a little bit. Let's 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 dial it back. Okay. Let's dial it back. Okay. I Back really to the like drawing board. Idea. Well, mm. and and hey, listen. This is what happens in the midst of creativity: is something might be born that was not the original intent. That is a fantastic idea, and I really think that we need to market this and we'll, actually we'll just come need up to with further product. development. Yeah, on this. I think so. I think like, so. imagine it was called the cranberry. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. And when when are the vapors released? Is it like upon? It could be like urination? a time release, or is it? I, I don't know. Okay. But it could be it, activated on. No, it can't be activated on flushing. No. We are really off topic. Okay. But <laughs> we've already said hey, we're going to move past tuned. this, but I, it's just I feel hard. like this is going to show up in a blog post. I mean, I think this is I pretty think it good. Should, this is it... pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Okay. Back to home improvement. Okay. okay. Home improvement. So So we were talking about cleaning. But 
Okay, so... But, okay, so imagine, like, the cranberry. Maybe this is something... Maybe it's, like, a stain stick. Oh, okay. Right? Mm -hmm. The cranberry. And it's because of its... The color and the shape of it. Okay. Yeah. Right? Is that is that home improvement? Again, that's, like... Well, I... Do we, do you, we think... You, I, I, I think of home improvement as something that you might find at Lowe's. Okay. It's a pretty broad category. Yeah, and they do have cleaning they products. They do, absolutely, 100%. That's true, that's true. What if it was a product that made something easier for seniors? Okay, yes. Like, um, like a, a stepladder? Uh-huh. A grabber arm? <laughs> yes, uh-huh. Um, uh -huh. What else? Or what if it was just like the the ergonomic shape that was like cranberry, uh -huh. but it was and for it was a pro uh -huh, that it was for a product that they use that might be difficult. Okay, so for what their what age. what would that be? What kind of home improvement are seniors doing? Right. Are grandmothers doing? Right. What's grandma always doing? She might be organizing the pantry. She might be doing laundry, but yeah. that's kind of further away from right home improvement. What is something where they might need to be like? reaching or pulling up on like ca cabinets sweeping the chimney sweeping the chimney chim chimney mm -hmm. um i'm thinking of a grabby device a grabby mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. okay uh now which which end would be cranberry like would it be the grip or would it be the grab i don't know what you mean when you say either of those words okay the, <laughs> uh, well i think of the grip as something that your hand is Right. Gripping. Yeah. And the grabby as the other end, the telescoping end. Oh, no, I'm not thinking of that. Are you talking yeah. about a long thing? That's what I was no, thinking. No, no. I'm no. thinking of something that attaches to something that they y use to help pull themselves up or do something. Mm. You know what I okay. mean? Okay. Well, that's not really home improvement. Unless, Unless <laughs> it was for a home improvement project. Okay. Like... Um, home improvement projects are elderly people <laughs> engaging in painting is, is, yeah. is that a, is i that don't a, i don't know i no? feel like they would they would be wise enough to hire a you would crew. think so yeah or or at least a family member to do it for yes. them yes they've uh, earned it they have earned it yeah hmm i think i think if we stay around cleaning i think that's safe okay because they all clean everybody cleans except for hoarders okay well what if what if it had to do with a dishwasher? Okay, okay. Like um, maybe something so that they don't have to bend down to load it? Could there be like some sort of... Cranberry? I don't know. Some sort of device that like pulls the bottom up to them or something? We, we may be over-engineering this. <laughs> I think so. But imagine this. Okay. Imagine this. What if it was something that you put in the dishwasher? Or, yeah, let's, let's stick with the dishwasher. What if it's something you put in the dishwasher to protect like you know in the uh in the washing machine you have those like bags or pouches to protect like delicate yeah what if it was something like that that goes in the dishwasher that was going to protect somehow protect what delicate china because grandmothers oh. have the china mm -hmm. and teacups and such uh-huh okay 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 so what and it, it, what if it had like orbs or little like knobs that were like cranberries that you could just set these things on hmm set them on like a like a mat or something i'm inside? thinking more of like they're little knobs so you just kind of set it on the knob right and they're like shaped like cranberries set what on the knob little teacups oh okay so you know you got the wire rack in the dishwasher yeah. and so this would be something that would fit either on the top or the bottom mm -hmm. and it's a little kind of like a uh plastic molded plastic thing it's mm -hmm. got holes in it kind of like a colander would have holes in it to let the water pass through okay but it provides like a solid place to rest your teacups okay it's pretty specific because is there a problem with teacups getting like damaged in the dishwasher or something well or? i don't know i don't know we don't know i mean you know I, I wash I my teacups by hand, honestly. Well, see, so and maybe that's probably part. Mo most of these grandmothers do. And so now we're coming to this thing with the cranberry. It's like, hey, kiss your hand-washing teacups days goodbye. Maybe. Because the cranberry's here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, there are no bad ideas. Yeah. And all we got to do is pitch a product. Okay. All right. So the, the cranberry is a device that protects... 
uh, delicate teacups and or china and allows them to be dishwashed safely. Yes. And uh, it is it just provides a soft and um, protective space mm-hmm. to, to set them in the dishwasher. Yep. And it's, it's colored red. And, and it's shaped bulbous. like a cranberry. Yep, it's it's bulbous and soft, and and water passes through because of all the holes. Mm-hmm. This sounds like a QVC. I think we might have done seller. it, guys. I mean, if anybody's listening, and that maybe could like hit us get up, this, get this going. I hit mean, us up. I'm sure that there's going to be lots of opportunities. I don't for know you guys how long to... that took us, but uh, you know, nailed it. There, nailed it. Absolutely. Yeah. There's some. There's some good stuff rattling mm-hmm. around in these old noggins okay that's for sure so that's, so that's how it's done we were in the flow jam we were making it happen we had our variables and we pulled something out um we pulled a couple things out i'm really i'm really thinking about that cranberry uh uti, UTI yeah <laughs> prevention well product but you know uh i i heard it once uh and i really liked it um the old adage that says where there's muck there's money where there's muck there's money yeah and, and what so, is more mucky than a toilet or and a uti utis <laughs> so that matter. Those there are, you have those it those are yeah well so, um yeah. that's our flow jam for today uh you know feel free to use this exercise on your own vary it um come up with your own creations but y- take some time every day to try and stimulate your mind, get out of your ordinary context, and do something that um, you haven't done, whether it's a new modality or a, an exercise or something, to um, facilitate new connections in your brain and allow yourself to prime that creative pump. So let's take a moment to talk about what creativity is, what constitutes creativity, and what we need to be looking for in order to find creativity and foster creativity. Absolutely. Uh, one way I like to think about creativity is just as, as kind of innovative ways to problem solve. Mm-hmm. That's a huge part of it. A lot of people think about creativity as being something that's beautiful and, and you know, the mind goes to something about art or some artistic pursuit. Mm -hmm. They they associate that with creativity. But really, at at its essence, creativity is about free thinking. Mm -hmm. Creativity is about doing, like you said, being innovative and doing something in a new way. Um, It's all about openness Mm -hmm. and possibility. Um, Really, creativity is found once we let go of our inhibitions let go of the things that hold us back yeah so you know kind of the world uh society telling us what uh boundaries and parameters surround whatever we're thinking of um we tend to be concerned about what other people are going to say and what they think, why we can't do things. And the reason that we think kids are so creative is because they don't seem to be hindered and, and weighed down by um, the opinions of others as much, by the limitations. Um, they just seem to be able to think. I, I almost feel like as adults we become afraid to throw out ideas and so to... so on that note let's talk about that study with, okay. with the kids yeah there was a study done um uh about creative problem solving and creativity with uh 1600 kids and they tested um these kids be- between the ages of four and five and 98 percent of them tested as creative geniuses uh based on these creative problem solving skills so that's almost everyone <laughs> almost every child uh, is was tested as a creative genius at that age. And then they tested the same group uh, at the age of 10. Oh, no, one minute. Yeah. Uh, who was doing, was it the parents doing these um, tests? Because I know every parent obviously thinks <laughs> their child is a creative genius. No, it was, it was, uh, I can't, re- I don't have the name here, but we'll, these ha- we'll put this in the show. Actual scientists were these actual? Actual scientists, yes. This was, this was a scientific study. So the scientific. parents were not the implement 
implementers of the test. Okay. Yes, they stud studied the same group of kids at the age of 10 and only 30% tested as creative geniuses at that age. And at 15, it dropped down to 12%. And then they said, as adults, that only 2% of us test as in that creative genius category. Definite pattern happening here. Yeah. Where, uh, this, and of course, these tests are, are subjective and, and they're, they're, it's, it's a scientific metric that they're employing. But I think that the um, idea or the notion holds true when we think about ourselves as adults or we think about people that we know who are adults. Um, the creatives really stand out because they're so different from everyone else. And we'll, we, we've said it before and we'll say it again that um, creativity is the opposite of conformity. So where corporate America or an education system pushes people into um, uniformity and conformity, for the sake of, you know, operational efficiency or well, or and in the school system, societal norms or whatever you want to say, just ease and or, or and, yeah, yeah, exactly ease. Mm -hmm. um, creativity is the opposite of that. Creativity values an individual perspective. Mm -hmm. Creativity in, uh, values spontaneity and happenstance and serendipity. Creativity is all about confluence of factors creating magic and elizabeth gilbert talks about this mm -hmm. in her book big magic it's it's it is um all things in a certain orbit happening and coming together to form something and, and new a person saying yes to, and, and a to person it. deciding to say yes to all these things that are happening and grabbing these notions out of the air or from inside themselves or whatever that's creativity, and, and creativity is driven by risk. It's driven by us saying yes and us taking a step towards the unknown. Courage. And, and yeah. really, I think this is where children have us beat mm -hmm. because they are not thinking necessarily about how they come off. They're not mm -hmm. thinking about their, their standing amongst their peers. Or all the limitations and the reasons why it won't work or That's right. shouldn't work or they That's need right. to uh, conform. Yeah, children children just kind of naturally are willing to take more risks and put themselves out there. For, for, all, of the, for all the fears of childhood, the irrational fears of childhood, putting themselves out there and taking these creative risks are not fears yeah. that children typically have. They just follow those impulses. And this is what we need to be doing. We need to be recapturing some of our childhood impulses. Yeah, and I think I, you, we might have a tendency to hear about this study and, and feel a little depressed or discouraged that, oh, wow, 2% of us are testing as creative geniuses. What a, you know, what a sad <laughs> state of affairs. And, and I think w when we look at this, we're encouraged because we realize that we're all born with this. This is something inside each of us. And that we believe here at Mossy Brain that creativity is like a muscle and that you can build it and grow it and it can become stronger. And the more that you use it, the more you have. And so it's, it's Absolutely. an encouraging statistic for us to realize, Almost every single one of us had this at some point. And yes, we may have lost it, but that doesn't mean we can't have it again or we can't grow and build it. But here's the other exciting part. Mossy Brain and the Mossy Brain tribe, we are going to do our darndest to change that statistic. Mm. If 2% is the baseline, then we have unlimited growth potential here, really folks. can really only go up. Mostly. That's right. Yeah. So we're, we, you know, we're excited by that and just to say like, okay, let's see how even, for instance, that activity we did, even, even implementing things like that into our lives that kind of get our brains moving and working and flowing in a different way, how that can kind of awaken something in us and kind of help us to kind of think about things in a different way and let go of some of our self-consciousness or um, the limitations. And we're excited to see how in our own lives, how things can start to, to head down this path of creativity, of a creative life. We're excited to see how, what we can do to implement that and make that, you know, our lifestyle. Yep. So it's exciting. Yep. Yes. So that's, that's what we 
think creativity is all about. We're talking about free thinking. We're talking about being open and saying yes. We're talking about losing inhibitions. You know, our hope is this week as you go about your day after listening to this or watching this, um, that uh, you will think differently about what you do, why you do it, and how you can do it differently and, and put a little creative spice into your life. Absolutely. Spice it up. Spice it up. <laughs> <laughs> I really feel like we should just end it there. Like, yeah. don't say anything else. Spice it up. <laughs> like every show, that should be the end. I'm open to it. I mean, it, maybe we There's need no a different catchphrase. There's no wrong answers. There's no wrong answers. You know, like... Mussy bro. I don't know. I just... There's no wrong answer. Creativity. Okay. It starts to get weird if you do, like, more than a syllable or two, so... We'll um, think about it, guys. It's... And, and just... I'm just going to end with an anecdote. Um, it, during the process of, of putting this podcast together, I've been working on some music for this podcast... And uh, you'll, you'll hear it. Uh, it's the opening music and the ending music of, of the show. And um, just that's, again, a, a muscle that, that can be worked. I, I was involved with music a lot in my past. I worked in a recording studio for a number of years, played in a lot of bands. And sitting back down to compose some music, uh, even if it's, you know, uh, garage band and working with loops and things like that, which some people wouldn't consider to be true music. But here's the point. It's creation. Um, I may have gotten a little carried away. I did several iterations of this theme music. And the very first iteration, which I, I will post, um, so look for it somewhere on, on the website or in the show notes, the first iteration of the Monsty Brain Show theme song was crazy <laughs> but it has become a favorite of our children it has as they uh when ben started to play it for us and there was some laughing and uh some faces and then suddenly uh, children started to sing it as they were going about their as an business anthem. as an anthem yes so uh just if you listen to it i want you to just imagine some children small children singing that um, wholeheartedly and enthusiastically. Do you want to? Do you want to give a little? N- I don't know, you know if I do oh. uh, want to sing a oh. few bars here. That's too bad. Uh, but just so you should know, I mean, I, I I'm not much of a vocalist, but I I did all the vocals. He did do all the vocals uh, on this um, uh, on this track, and you know, working the studio, we would refer to that as scratch vocals because that means that it's to be replaced at a later time, and with either a more rehearsed singer or a totally different singer altogether. And because this was a draft, they will not be replaced. And uh, But here's the point. I was working in an environment of no inhibitions. It was very instinctual. I, <laughs> I did exactly what idea came into my brain at that moment, and it shows. Yes. <laughs> And so I, I hope that you all listen to it and, and get some delight out of it. Uh, should we play this f- on the podcast for these people? I, I feel like we are talking about it, and maybe we should I think just... we should. All right. We're going to play you the first draft of the Mossy Brain Show With theme song in all its glory for you right now. And you are welcome. There you have it. Yes. Uh, there was a lot of things included in that, uh, including animal noises, um, crowds cheering. Yes. Um, uh, I felt like there was like a like a little bit of a spooky quality to it. Did you add some sort of like like almost like it was haunted? Like yeah. A haunted track. A little haunt, like mm-hmm. a haunted. Mm-hmm. You know. 
Uh, no, I, I didn't. I didn't intentionally add. Oh, add maybe that was just the feeling that my soul feeling. received well, from listening to but it. But see, everybody, it's it's all up it's for interpretation. For yeah, right. because right. our, our kids got great joy out of that. They did. They sing and that. So they may, sing all maybe about I have creativity. a future in uh, <laughs> in uh, children's music, perhaps. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know who this is going to resonate with. You know. The, the mentally insane or children or uh-huh, I don't uh-huh. I don't know which sometimes is both yeah you know because kids are crazy kids kids be, be, be crazy cray cray uh, we've got four so we're kind of mm-hmm. experts on the craziness mm-hmm. and they have us for parents so I don't know what that says they're either destined for greatness or doomed uh, uh, no middle ground no middle ground yeah but we're, I mean it could be both could be both so. this week we want you to get in the flow. We want you to do your own flow jam. We want you to create something amazing. Um, and when you do, please let us know. Drop us a line. We've got an email address set up. It's called creation at mozzybrain.com. We want to hear and see your creations. Please send it to us. We want you guys to be involved with this. Absolutely. We want this to be a place where um, we can share our creations with each other. We don't have to worry about um judgment and criticism and um just have that fear but this is a place where we we can encourage each other with our with our own creations and just say hey look what i did we we are a tribe of weirdos and in our opinion the weirder the better so bring your weird we're behind you if you do something that's beautiful and wonderful that's great but if you do something that's weird and wild even better (laughs) that's it for us thanks for tuning in And uh, we'll see you next time. Mozzie Brain?